And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and Kemet is one of my favorite games. Oh wait, am I spoiling stuff? Not really, because today we're talking about Kemet Blood and Sand, which is a sequel, not sequel, it's a reworking of Kemet first edition. This is the second edition of Kemet. In another video, I'm going to compare the two different versions so you can see what the, my thoughts on how they've done the changes, but I really love the game. So I'm going to assume that you may never have played Kemet before, so I'm going to give you kind of a brief overview of how the game works, and then I'll tell you why I like it so much. There are four different color technologies in the game, and if you play with less than five players, you're going to pick which colors you use. So there are red, that's attack technologies, white are kind of like upgrade technologies, blue is defensive, and black has to do with death. So there's 16 tiles that come with each technology. These trays actually don't come with the game, they're in an upgrade kit, so they're easy for me to store these, but you just otherwise you just set them there to the board. There are 16 for each. They basically come in levels, one, two, three, and four. Four of each of them. In this game, players are trying to get the most points. You have this board here, which is going to keep track of the player turn order, which will change from round to round. But over the course of the game, you're going to get points, and you'll just keep track of them here. And when someone gets to a certain number of victory points, the game's over. You'll notice there's round tokens and there are square tokens. Square tokens are permanent victory points, can never be taken from you. Round ones are temporary and someone else can take that from you. So if you get a bunch of permanent victory points, you're going to win at some you know, point during the game. But the round ones are usually like for controlling a temple or having your pyramid finished. Each player is going to get their faction, a color faction, and they're going to have prayer points here. And as the game goes by, you're going to be doing and activating special abilities based on prayer points. So the more of these, as you spend them, those, this will go down, and you can have a max of 11 prayer points. Players also have tokens that they're going to be using. These tokens, each round of the game, players are going to take actions. You're going to put this on one of the spots on your board, and notice here I put red, white, and blue. I'm pretending those are the technologies being used in this game. But you'll put one of these and take that particular action. The only rule is after you've placed all five of your tokens, there's five of these, you must have one in each level. Most of the things are pretty simple. These give you two prayer points. This lets you recruit more people. These let you move your units on the board and attack with them. This lets you buy technologies of different colors, and this lets you upgrade your pyramids. Each player is going to start with different levels of pyramids. So you could start with a level one of all three colors, or you can start with a level two and a level one. And that's what you're going to be doing as the game goes by. This is a level one pyramid. And then I can upgrade it to a level two. So I put this on top uh, of my pyramid. And again, you have this little token to show what color it is. And then here's a level three. And then level four, I just flip this to show the point at the top. And that's a level four pyramid. The level of the pyramid that you have shows what technologies you can buy. You can't buy a level 4 technology unless you are already at level 4. Also, for each level 4 pyramid that you have, you get a victory point. Now, if someone else captures that area, they can take that victory point away from you for a while until you recapture it. But So if you get all three pyramids up, you can get three victory points. You also can buy amazing and cool technologies. Each player has 12 units. You see they start here. You have a max of five units in an area. A lot of times when you move around the board, you'll be following the different sections on this board. There are ports that you can leave from, basically following the arrows. And players also can spend points to teleport from their pyramids to any spot that shows a monolith on the board. What you're trying to do is you're trying to control these different temples. Controlling a temple gives you victory points a temporary victory point, and at night, you'll get prayer points from controlling them. And there's a couple temples here on this middle island where if I go here, I will get a lot of prayer points, and if I control that gives me a victory point, but I lose a guy every round. And up here, I can sacrifice two guys to get a permanent victory point. 
there will likely be a lot of battles in this game. One of the reasons is that when you attack somebody, if you as the attacker are the winner, you get a permanent victory point for being the attacker. When players attack one another, you're going to look at your handful of battle cards that you have. Each player has the same set of battle cards, although some technologies can give you more battle cards. Players are going to pick one of their battle cards and play it face down, and they can also play some extra power cards that they have, although each player has a bluff card that they can play, which basically means nothing. Some of these little cards will cost prayer points occasionally, but this one, for example, adds a wound. So here, for example, let's say the green player attacked the blue player in this section, so the power here is three to four. Each player secretly plays a card, so blue plays a card that adds one, so they're now a five. The green player plays a card that adds three, so their power is a six. They're the winners of this round. Green players do two damage to the blue players, but because the blue players played three defense, nobody dies. The blue players do one damage to the green player. They have no defense, so one of the green units dies. The blue players do lose, though, the battle and are forced to retreat to an adjacent area if there's one open. Now, when you win or lose a battle, you also have the option of your remaining units. You can basically sacrifice them, getting a prayer point for each. That's to stop someone from just coming in and swooping in if you have, let's say, one person left after a battle is over. So that's pretty much all the rules of the game, but the technologies are the things that change everything. You're going to have technologies you can buy. For example, this gives you an extra power when you attack someone. This gives you one extra movement. Most of the time, you can only move one. And each of these different colors is going to add all sorts of things. But on a personal level, one of the things that I really enjoy is that the game allows you to buy giant monsters. When you buy a technology that gives you one of these monsters, you're going to take the monster miniature. So let's say, for example, I buy the giant stag beetle. That miniature gets attached to a unit. If the unit dies, the monster goes away, and you'll have a chance to bring them back. And then they just add benefits to that unit. So for example, this one is simple. It just adds two attack, but also adds two to the movement of that creature. While the really nasty scorpion, who's one of my favorite, adds two to the attack, two to the damage, and one to the movement. So each of the monsters will add to that. But while monsters are cool, they may not be what you're looking for. You may want to buy this technology, which simply gives you a permanent point. You may buy want to buy this technology, which gives you an extra action token, so you'll be able to take more tokens per turn. You might want to buy the defensive ability, this blue one here, which gives you plus one attack on the defense. You might want to buy something from the white technology, which makes all the different actions and things you take cost one less prayer point. And then all kinds of nasty stuff in the death section. There is, like I said, 16 different technologies for each of the four colors. So the possibilities and combinations are endless. So the once someone has nine victory points at the beginning of your turn, before you do anything else, and no one else has more than you, you win the game. The board of Kemet is a very interesting board because while everything you know looks like, oh, this person over here is not next to this person, you are about, because of the way the board shaped, you're equidistant from pretty much everybody, no matter where you are. It's a unique board in that way. There's some other rules about movement on the river and things like that, and you can't go... You can't move across somebody's walls unless you're next to it. There's a few rules like that. I'm not thrilled with this board. I think this board looks okay. I don't know how to explain it. It almost looks like a... It just looks fake. I don't... It, it, the, I'm talking about how it looks. The way that it works in the game is fine. The tiles and the art on the tiles is tremendous. I really like it, although I'll tell you what, I really love these trays, and that's an extra thing, but wow, do I want these trays a lot. I also like the pyramids, the way that the pyramids stack, and as you build the pyramids, the three-dimensional pyramids um, on top of each other, I think that's fun. I like the models. The big monster models next to everything else. The cards. But one thing I really like that this game provides, and it's a big deal, it's going to be overwhelming when you play this game with all the different technologies and things. But this 
shows you. Here's red. Here's blue. Here's white. Here's black. Here's all the divine intervention cards, the power cards I mentioned earlier and what they do. And they even have the green tiles from the expansion in here. So there's one of these for each player. Really, really handy. Um, uh, just I like that the, the different miniatures for the different colors. So let me show you four color miniatures here. They each have a different model too. And that's really cool. And I like that quite a bit. So other than the board, I really like how this game looks. I like the player boards. I like that you can slot the stuff into them. It's just fantastic components. There's a lot of reasons I like Kemet. And it's, the, well, let me just go into them. So first of all, I tend to like games where you attack other players, but I found that most games where you attack other players have various flaws. You, one person gets destroyed. It makes sense to attack somebody who's in last place. They go on forever and ever and ever. It's better to turtle, whatever the reasons may be. And Kemet supersedes all that stuff. So. Let's talk about the combat first. The combat card system. You have a set of combat cards, and on every time you do combat, you will play one of your cards, and you'll discard one. So, And then once all your cards are out of your hand, whether you've discarded them and played them, you get to bring them all back. Now, people don't know which cards you've discarded, um, so they're never quite sure which ones you have or don't have, and everybody has the same ones. Unless, of course, you buy a technology that gives you a slightly different card than everybody else. But am I going to do a high attack? But then if I do a high attack, maybe you'll kill all my units, which basically negates me winning the battle anyway. So maybe I should play something with a lot of defense, but then you might play a high attack. There's a really good attack, but you might have to kill one of your own units to do it. I like that choice. It's very simple. There's no rolling dice. You're just trying to outthink your opponent, but then using these little cards to add to it. I might play this card that gives plus one defense. This card is played outside of battle and just kills someone on the board. Costs a prayer point, but I might do it to weaken you up before I come in for the battle. I really like that system. It's smooth, fast, and fun. Then, the fact that you can't have more than five units, you can attack people from anywhere on the board, you can teleport to where those obelisks are, which is a nice feature, so you're never safe in any spot. You're going to take a spot, you're going to control it, you know someone's going to try to take that spot from you. And then the monsters. Yes, this is a me thing. I tend to like playing games with big monsters, but I know I'm not the only one. And there's so many games out there that have a big monster that doesn't mean anything. Here the monsters mean something and they're different. I showed you the scorpion and the stag beetle. They're big and huge. But there's the snake who cancels someone else's ability. There's the, the bird which basically lets you fly over a wall. You don't have to stop at a wall when you're attacking it. Each one has different unique abilities. And they're fun. You put them on the board, it's intimidating. I'm walking around with the elephant. You, you're kind of a little intimidated by that group. But those monsters, while they're really cool and they're fun to move around and smash stuff with, they may not be the best things. There's all different tech. And honestly, the monsters are just the icing on the tech cake. I sit there and sit there and think, maybe I'll pick this technology that means whenever I win a battle defensively, I get a point. Because normally that doesn't happen. Maybe I should just buy a point. That's a point, but it doesn't do anything good for me. Maybe I'll do this thing where at night I get to resurrect more of my people than everybody else, which means I can let people die willy-nilly because I know they're going to come back the following night. It's so cool. Every game you sit there. Now, like I said, it could be overwhelming the first time you go in because you're like, oh, there are, you know, you're, let's say you're playing with three colors. I have 48 different techs I can pick from. Well, some of the level ones there's duplicates of, but still so much choice. But it flows in there. You pick something you're going to go with. I usually tend to pick the red because I like to be very aggressive and go out and attack people. But sometimes I might pick something else. And it depends about the three, you know, if you're playing with three different colors. And then in the expansion, there's a fourth, I mean, a fifth color, green, like Cthulhu style stuff. But again, look at, watch my expansion review tomorrow to see what that's like. It's just good. You're so caught up in this game. Now you say, Tom, you love this game. Does it have any flaws? Well... I'm not sure it's great with five players. Five players, it plays okay, but it's a smidge too long. And two players works fine, but my sweet spot is three and four. Uh, 
two players, I think I might pick something else to play. But with three or four players, I always feel like in most of these, you know, creatures on a map style game, that one person's left in the dark. And here, that's never the case. The victory point thing works really well here. It's going to end. So you're going to see people getting points. It rewards you for attacking, which is great because it means things are going to happen. There's the different temples giving you different amounts of prayer points means you might want to go for one that gives you fewer prayer points because hopefully no one will fight you for that one, but it's still a victory point. How fast you want to increase your pyramids? Mm, 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 mm. Excellent. Good components. Great artwork. A fun mythological theme where the big giant mythological monsters feel like big mythological monsters. A game where every time I play it, it's different. And a game that satisfies me fitting in 90 minutes to two hours of a big, complete game. I love it. Again, some people might have the first one and wonder, should you get the second one? Well, check out my comparison video for that. But if you don't own Kemet and you like games where you attack other players at all, this one is just the king. It's my favorite in this genre. I like picking the actions and using prayer points. And I love the battle system. I love the technology trees. And it all comes together in a perfect mix of just one of my favorite games in existence. So that's Kemet. Can you tell I like it? Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment. Excellent. Excellent.